welcome back to the start of another weekly vlog. We are here in Seattle. We flew in, and we want to say this morning, we left New York in the morning. We landed a little bit late in Seattle, like one-ish, shuttled to the hotel, got unpacked, refreshed, got dressed and not travel clothes, and now we are headed out to explore. We're gonna try and hit up the Pike Place Market before it closes. I've heard that the weekends are the best time to go to the market. Like, it's really more of the experience if you go on the weekends. I actually originally had like the opposite thought. I was like, oh, well, during the week, it'll be less crowded. And someone was like, no, don't do that. Like, go on the weekend. So we're gonna head there now. It does close at six, and it's almost four. You know what I love about the West Coast? Football starts at 10 a.m. So we get to have brunch and football. So we are headed now to a bar to watch the Cowboys game. Go Cowboys, although they're playing the Dolphins. So Bloody Marys. Probably not much of a game. Mm -hmm. We have to work later. I don't know if Bloody Marys are the answer. So we're gonna head out to get some breakfast and watch some football. Shocker, it's raining in Seattle. But at least I have a cute umbrella. The Cowboys won and I went back and changed and now I am headed actually over to the convention center, which is where the event is. I mentioned this in my plan with me, but because I work for the same company that we're here for, even though I'm here as a guest, as Sam's guest, I actually am working today, and it's offsetting by a vacation day later this week, so that's really nice. So they have like a meet the home office, meet and greet with a bunch of tables. So I'm gonna go to the table that my department is at and hang out there for the day. Also though, I have to tell you, so last year when we were in Orlando, you know, Orlando has the downtown, but we weren't anywhere near the downtown. We were out at like the big hotels. Now, the hotels were decked out with New York Life stuff everywhere. Stickers, signs, banners, all the things. But it was a hotel, so I expected that. There are banners, New York Life banners, down the streets of Seattle. On the streets of Seattle, wherever you walk, New York Life, everywhere. So like, it's really cool. Like, it feels like we've, we've taken over the city.
Good morning. I always love the lighting in hotel rooms. I feel like it's being high up and then having this like gorgeous window. It just makes you look fabulous. Anyways, Sam got up early this morning to go to the sessions. I went to the sessions last year. So here's the struggle with this event, right? We're here because of him and I'm here as a guest. I paid for my own flight. I'm paying a guest fee. Yes, I'm staying in the hotel and yes, I have lots of free meals and activities and stuff, but I am paying a guest fee and I'm taking vacation days. So I don't really want to get up at 6 a.m. and go listen to the CEO speak at 7 a.m. However, because I work for the company, it feels a little bit like, oh, are you really not getting up to go listen to your CEO speak at 7 a.m.? And last year, because it was in Orlando and I'd been to Orlando a bunch, I, I did. I, I went to a lot of the sessions. I went and heard a lot of the speakers and it was great. And I learned a lot. This year, none of that. It worked yesterday and that's it. <laughs> actually, let me show you my badge. So my badge, they actually gave me a double-sided name badge. So on one side, it has my name and the office that he's in and it has guests on the bottom. And then the other side, it has my name and it says home office. So yesterday I was on the home office side and from now on, I'm on the guest side. Don't ask me about home office related things. I'm not working, I'm on vacation. So Sam got up super early. I was able to fall back asleep for a little bit. And then I went up and went and got breakfast. They have breakfast at the convention center where the sessions are going on. And it says on the agenda, like agent and home office breakfast. Last year I went to those breakfasts and it was fine. They also do breakfast in each of the individual hotels. So let me rewind. I don't know if I've mentioned that there are like four or five different hotels that people are staying at. I think they just can't fit everybody in one hotel. So they have to spread people out. But so there is breakfast provided in one of the conference rooms in the hotel that we are staying in. So that started at eight. So I woke up kind of like relaxed for a while and then went and got breakfast down there. And now I have a couple minutes to spare and then I'm going to go take a workout class. I signed up for a workout class. It's kind of like a boot camp type class. It says arms and abs, but then the description kind of says something different. I don't know. It's like a 10 minute walk from the hotel. So that class starts at 9 30 i'm gonna double check that to make sure but i thought that i would show you the hotel room like give you a little quick tour of the hotel room and then show you a couple of my favorite like travel things miscellaneous tips and tricks and things that i like to do when i travel okay so here's a quick scan of the main part of the room yes the bed is unmade because it is i do like to make my bed every day but when i'm on vacation somebody makes it for me so a couple things i love about this room i love the stand for the suitcase there's one here that's huge and like fits my giant suitcase and then there's one over there on that side of the bed that is holding sam's suitcase normally you have to get the folding thing out of the closet to put your suitcase on and then there's only one so i really appreciate that it's built in like that i think that's really cool I also really like this ledge over here under the TV. I've been putting like my purse and my name badge and then I have all my chargers and stuff over here and then it's got a little table which I much prefer to a desk because then we're both able to sit at it and he has his computer with him right now but yesterday we both had our computers out and we were working on different things and it was nice that we both had space versus when it's a desk in a hotel room only one person has space. Um, I also love, love, love this light that is in, let me turn it on and show it to you, above the desk. Oh my gosh, it's pink and orange and like a dark brown. It's just beautiful and I'm obsessed with the light. And then it's got this little chase lounge chair over here. We haven't really used that to be honest with you. But again, I'm loving all the built-ins. I just think, I think it's a modern room, but it doesn't feel, it feels homey still. It's cute, I like it. All right, and then over here, so we have our little kitchen area and a couple of things. I always travel with some sort of airborne. So this is the actual, just like the CVS brand, but it is, it's just vitamin C. It's good for your immune system. And when you're traveling and you know meeting new people, shaking hands, going on airplanes, it's just helpful to keep your immune system up. So I take one in the morning and one at night and I always travel with that. And I just use the hotel cup to do that. I always put my vitamins over in like the kitchen area section. I always travel with my own cup. I love getting free ice at the hotels and then I can fill up water everywhere that I go. Um, my camera battery. So what I've been doing now that I have a camera instead of my phone when I'm vlogging, 
I will switch out my camera battery every time I'm back in the hotel room. I just started this at Plantation, Arizona, and it has worked flawlessly. So, like, right now, this one's at green. So, as soon as I'm done filming, before I leave for my workout class, I'm actually going to switch them out and put this battery in there so it can charge and put the full one in my camera. And then when I get back, I'll probably switch them back as long as it's at green. So, that's just something that I do to make sure that my battery is always fully charged. All right, I wanted to show you the room key, very go wild style. The room key has, you know, the company logo. It says executive council. It's got a Seattle um, skyline on it. And then it's got the New York Life Executive Council logo on the back. It's also one of those room keys where you just have to like tap it against the door. It's not a swipey, which I appreciate because then I can put it in my phone wallet pocket and it doesn't lose its ability to swipe it. And you know what I mean? When it has the swipe on the back, uh, you can't put it in your phone like you can't put it near your phone or it deactivates. Although kind of want to pretend it deactivates so that I can go get another one so I can make sure that I have like a nice one for memory keeping. <laughs> okay, the food. So like I said, they had breakfast downstairs and they had hot breakfast. So I had eggs, bacon, a pancake, some breakfast potatoes. It was fantastic. But I decided to snag a couple of the like cold breakfast items for snacks throughout the day because they don't provide lunch. That's the only meal they don't provide. So I just decided to grab, I'm, grab some Cheerios and I grabbed two muffins, hopefully housekeeping. I need to make sure they don't take my muffins. And then I grabbed some yogurt, which I'm gonna put in the fridge. Of course, I did not grab a spoon because they didn't have plastic utensils, which is good. They had like regular utensils, but I, I didn't grab a spoon. So I, TBD on how I'm gonna actually eat that yogurt. Um, so I'm hoping that housekeeping will take the plate and the cup, but leave my muffins. I'm trying to decide if there's something else I should do. I don't know. Anyways, then we have the closet, which is kind of a mess. So one of the things I always do is throw shoes on the bottom of the closet as long as there's space. That way I don't have to worry about them staying lined up, looking nice and neat, but I, they're also not thrown all, all around the hotel room. And then there's two drawers. So we each took a drawer, although my pajamas are sitting up here on top of the safe. And then all the clothes. He actually brought like a hanging bag like he packed a I don't know whatever it's called so he has hangers from home which is really helpful because normally when we travel together if we're wearing a lot of nice clothes we have to ask for extra hangers and we did not this time because he brought some of his own and then so I went ahead and hung up all my things clearly I have a, col a color scheme for fall okay so one thing I want to quickly touch on with clothes and I think I talked about this in the plantation vlog when I am traveling the best way to de-wrinkle your clothes after having them in a suitcase is hanging them up putting them in the bathroom, putting the shower on as hot as you possibly can, shutting the door, and then letting them steam out. Nine times out of 10, that works flawlessly. As you saw earlier in the vlog, I had to iron a couple things, and you'll see because of the bathroom setup, it did not work out as well as it does when it's like a normal shower bathroom combo. But anyways, all my clothes up, ready to go for the rest of the week. Alrighty, and then we go into the bathroom. So the bathroom has a sliding door, which I don't know how I feel about. I mean, it's okay. I like uh, that it has a mirror on the outside, so if he's showering in there, I can get ready out here. That's nice. Let's go ahead and open this back up. So like I mentioned, it's not a normal bathtub shower combo, which is kind of a bummer. It made it really hard for things to get steamy. Like I, first I tried it while Sam was in the shower and I hung stuff up out here and none of it worked. So then what I tried doing is I opened the door and I hung all the stuff on this side of the door, turned it on full blast and shut the door and it still didn't work on all the fabric. Some of it, it worked. I didn't have to iron everything, but I still had to iron a few things. Oh well, all right. Then I always travel with one of these like hanging bags. I like just being able to throw things in there. It helps keep the bathroom counter a little bit tidier. I usually like travel with essentials, band-aids, Q-tips, cotton pads, etc. I use the other clear one for jewelry so that I can always see what I'm digging for. And then the rest of these are just some miscellaneous things. New to my travel ensemble that has absolutely changed my travel experience are these accordion pouches from Erin Condren. Holy moly, y'all. I'm obsessed with these. So when these first got posted to the website, I was like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand the concept. I didn't think they were connected at first. I thought it was just like a bunch of colors. I don't really understand. Then people started getting them and posting about them. And then I understood how it worked. And I understood like, okay, that can be kind of cool, but I still didn't own them. Once I got them in my hands, I became obsessed. So first off, they stand so well, as you can see, like they stand up 
even without anything in them, they stand like this open, which makes it so helpful to open things up and be able to access them. So I brought two on this trip. So this one is all of my toiletries. Now, obviously, if you're carrying on a bag, you can't have your toiletries like this because you got to pull them out in security. But if you're checking a bag, this is awesome. So I've got like moisturizer cream here. I got face wash here. I have like body stuff here. So, well, that is just perfume now. There was something else in there. And then I have like miscellaneous stuff. So I got nail polish, nail polish remover, if any of my nails chip. I feel like there was something else in here. Oh, lavender. I have a burn that I'm trying to get the scar to go away. Um, and then these two are both hair products, this one and this one. But I love just being able to have this out on the counter. I can pull stuff out, toss it back in, and then it, again, keeps the counter clean. And then this one I've been using for makeup, which also has been awesome. I don't know how the toothpaste ended up in there, but it allows me to keep my makeup sort of segregated by type of product and it makes getting ready just fast and then cleaning it up, like not leaving it all over the counter easy. So the first one, you know, I've got like foundation and concealer and like um, sponges. And then I've got uh, my palette, which by the way, I just need to talk about this palette. I got this from ColourPop, very inexpensive. And it has become my new travel palette. I built it myself. So I have four eyeshadow colors, a blush and a highlight. It's paper, not paper, but you know what I mean? Like cardstock. So it's so lightweight. I love traveling with this. Um, I have my setting powder. Normally I also have my like foundation type powder that I put all over my face, but that's in my purse right now to touch up. And then also the bronzer should be in there too, my bronzer. And then this one I have brushes. This one's got like face cream. So I've got a primer, sunscreen, my Max, Max Fix Plus, Mac Fix Plus. And then I think my setting spray is in here too. Yeah, the alternator setting spray. This is eyes, so eyeliner, um, mascara, and, and eyelash curler. And then this is all of the lipsticks that I brought. So I just love these things, okay? I'm just, this is the first time I'm traveling with them, but I am obsessed with them. And then this is Sam's side. He just uses this pouch and puts all of his stuff in there. And then I always love when there is a shelf at here at the bottom. So I have my curling iron down there and then my straightener, which is still plugged in. It's obviously off, but then I can just stick it under there when I'm not using it. So that's it. That's our hotel room tour. That's how I've unpacked all the things and sort of just a couple things I always do when I travel. Now I have a couple minutes, so I'm going to change my shoes and brush my teeth and then I'm going to head to my workout class. Y'all, I just realized, I don't know if you saw this in the last couple of the vlog, but I still have plastic on my zipper. This is a brand new pullover from Lily Pulitzer that I got during the after party sale a couple weeks ago. And I almost didn't pack it because I was like, is it too summery? And I was like, I don't care. I wanted it to, for this exact purpose, to wear over my workout clothes when I'm walking to a workout class because it's chilly outside. But I, I realized as I was like in the elevator coming down here, I was like, there's still plastic on the zipper. It's a cute zipper. It's like a little bamboo stick, but it's covered in plastic. Ooh, holy moly, that class kicked my butt. But that's, I mean, that's what you want, right? Especially when you're on vacation and you're eating and drinking all of the things. So, the, like I mentioned earlier, the class, I was kind of confused because online it said that it was like a hit class, but that it was also abs and arms. And nope, that definitely lived up to its name. So, it's called Baseline Fitness. It's just here in Seattle. They have a couple locations here in Seattle, though. I found it via Class Pass. Again, one of the things I love about Class Pass is when I'm traveling, I can just put the address of wherever I'm staying and find places nearby. So it was like half the time you were on the treadmills and half the time you were on the floor doing like strength training things. And when you were doing strength training, it focused on abs and arms. So it definitely loved to its name. It was a cute little studio. I, um, I got a really good workout over like 400 calories and I forgot to start my watch at the beginning. However, so I was very clearly the least fit person in that class. And that used to bother me. And it used to like, I would feel really self-conscious and sometimes I would even like try to really keep up and not that I don't want to push myself, but like there's a difference between like pushing myself and like doing something that my body really can't do. Part of, I got over that partly because ugh, I don't live here, so I'm never gonna see those people again. So that's helpful. But the other piece of it is you really just, you can't, you can't worry about what other people think. Like you're in that class for you, not for them. And you're gonna get a good workout and you're gonna do what you can and it's gonna be good for your body because you're moving your body regardless and if it's not as fast or as intense or as heavy as the person next to you, like that's okay. So I feel really good about it and now I think I'm gonna stop at one of those Starbucks reserves on my way home. I saw it when I was, oh, also the walk here. Yes, it was only 10 minutes from the hotel, but it was 10 minutes like up uphill. The good news is that means my walk home, totally downhill. 
but I think I'm gonna stop at one of those Starbucks reserve places. I haven't been in one yet. Um, I've seen a couple here while we've been here, and I have a little bit of time. The only thing I'm trying to do today is this tour that is every hour on the hour, and I have plenty of time. It's 10.30, so I think I'm gonna stop in and see what it's all about. All right, I'm back in my room with the fabulous lighting. Uh, it started raining in Seattle, shocker. It said it wasn't supposed to rain till one, so I actually didn't bring my umbrella with me this morning because first off, I did not plan to stop at Starbucks for over an hour and also it wasn't supposed to rain till one. And I was like, I'm gonna be back by one for sure. So it started raining on me. I was get, getting ready to leave Starbucks and I needed to go by the conference center, the uh, convention center, to pick up my ticket for tomorrow's activity. And I like sort of frantically, I was like enjoying my time at Starbucks, reading my book, and then I realized that like uh, they might get out of sessions like right as I'm trying to go get my ticket and I'm in like workout clothes and I just, since it's my company and I could run into people that I work with, I did not want to be there in workout clothes. So I like frantically checked out at Starbucks and then like as I was leaving, realized it was raining, but I didn't have time to wait out the rain because I needed to go to get there and get my ticket, but it worked out. Um, so I talked about this in my plan with me, but one of the days happens to be tomorrow. They do like a family activity and you get to pick from a number of different activities. In Orlando last year, it was either a water park or an alligator tour and I didn't do either of them because neither of them sounded like something I really just wanted to do by myself. But tomorrow I'm going to the aquarium. So I went by and picked up my ticket and then tomorrow morning I have to meet somewhere um, to take a bus to the aquarium. But while I was there, I also grabbed the like swag equivalent that you get at registration, which I didn't get yesterday because when I went up to register, there was all this like franticness about finding my name tag because I had the special double-sided name tag. So they didn't actually end up giving me the stuff that you get. So I grabbed it today. Um, I almost did it because I was like, I have enough stuff. Like do I really need the stuff, but it's so cute. So let me show you. Okay. So one of the things is this tote bag, which again, I don't need a tote bag of this size. Like I don't really use tote bags of this like style, but it's so cute. So they took the inspiration from the, um, I forget what it says now, like public market place or whatever the sign is down at Pike's Place Market. And instead it says New York life and it's got the little market and the little pig and the fish. Like it just looks so cute. I was like, I just have to have this. And then the other thing was actually much more useful. It's an umbrella and given that Sam loses umbrellas, like it's his job. Like he's not allowed to touch my Aaron Condren one. He knows that. But I had two other actually New York Life branded umbrellas that I'd gotten at work that he borrowed and subsequently lost. So he has his umbrella that he brought, which is like a plain blue one. And then we also now have two of these New York Life ones. I had another one of these at one point. Um, they're not like the nicest umbrellas. Like they don't have the button that you can press to get it to open up like the Aaron Condren one or like other umbrellas that I have. But I mean, it's cute. It says New York Life and it also, oh, it says Seattle on it. Oh my God, I actually didn't realize it was Seattle specific. I thought it was just their like generic New York Life umbrella. Oh, that's cute. Okay, now I'm really glad that I went and got it. So, super cute. And then I grabbed some, um, they had like maps and brochures on the table, so I grabbed some of those. And then my ticket for the aquarium tomorrow. I stuck it in my name tag so that I didn't lose it. So now, originally I was gonna get ready before I went on this tour. So it's a tour of like the underground tunnels of Seattle or something like that. And like I said, I was originally gonna get ready, like fully ready, hair, shower, hair, makeup. 
but I don't think I'm going to because again, it's raining and it's gross outside and it's a walking tour. And so, and tonight is like the formal night. Like I'm probably gonna curl my hair and like wanna look nice. There's lots of pictures. So like, uh, I kinda just wanna stay like this. I might change out of this, I'm debating. Cause okay, let me show you. So I have on my like workout pants, which honestly the patterns next to each other, I think look a little bit ridiculous, but that's what I've been wearing all day. But I, I just haven't, I didn't really care. But now I'm like, okay, you should probably either put on a sol more solid top or put on solid black leggings. But these leggings are so comfortable. So I think I'm gonna do the other way around. I think I'm gonna take this off and put on my actual rain jacket that I brought. Um, I bought this rain jacket a couple of years ago when I was traveling to London for the first time. And then it was like the one time in London that it didn't rain the whole time. It was like sunny and gorgeous. But I have, it's just like a North Face um, rain jacket with a hood. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll take my workout top off, put on like a, like a t-shirt, just like a normal shirt, and then wear my rain jacket um, to go on the tour. So I have about an hour or so before I need to leave. I'd have to leave like right the second. Like I said it was every hour on the hour. I'd have to leave right this second to make the one o'clock. So I think I'm gonna take an hour. I'm gonna work on some YouTube stuff. I'm gonna relax a little bit, eat one of my muffins that housekeeping did not take, and then go and go on the two o'clock tour. It's my job to make you experts on early Seattle history. Well, the tour began, you guys, with a guy by the name of Bill Spidell. Bill Spidell was a local historian and a newspaper columnist here in Seattle, and actually Bill's offices were next door in the Pioneer Building. So this is the 1960s. He comes into work one morning, looks out the window, and this beautiful Victorian building, it was called Hotel Seattle, had been torn down. Well, that just set Bill off. He went over to his wife, Shirley, and he said, Shirley, they tore down another building. In the, in the 1960s, the city was going to tear down all of these Victorian buildings and turn the neighborhood into parking garages and condos. So Bill, Bill gets an idea to start a tour. And he would take people underground and tell you some stories. And at the end of the tour, he would lock you underground until you signed his petition to save the neighborhood. And it worked.
Good morning, happy Wednesday. It is a rare, not rainy day in Seattle. It is absolutely perfect outside. The sun is shining, it's like 60s, maybe 70s, I don't know. But it's absolutely gorgeous outside. It is a gorgeous day to take a ferry boat over to, I think it's called Bainbridge Island, and I'm gonna go visit some wineries or some wine tasting rooms. You can go to the actual wineries, but they're not within walking distance, and since I don't have a car, nor do I want to be driving a car and wine tasting. I'm just gonna do the tasting rooms. But I just went and got a donut and some coffee at Top Hot. It was highly recommended by a ton of people. So I thought I would check it out. The donut was delicious. I haven't had much of the coffee yet. I decided to take it with me on my ferry ride. So I'm so excited and taking this little like bridge walkway on the second level here over to where the ferries are. I think that's where the ferries are. Honestly, I'm just following the signs, hoping that I make it properly. I have like 10 minutes before the ferry is supposed to leave, but they only run like every hour on the weekdays. So I can't miss this one. surreal because it's like a new country neither of us had ever been to Canada before but at the same time it still feels very much like America I mean it is America but it still feels very much like the US we actually had a pretty long travel day so we went to the airport the Seattle airport and picked up a rent car so of course by the time you like got away to the airport got on the rent car shuttle and then like waited in the line got the rent car like there was a line to exit the rent car place I feel like it feels like it took forever and then we stopped and got some food because we were both starving. And then we finally got on the road and it did not click. Like it didn't, it clicked as we were going over the border, as we were waiting in line to go through customs, that our phones weren't gonna work as soon as we crossed the border. 
like that it was gonna be considered international as soon as we crossed the border. It just, it did not click and at that point it was too late. Like we were past the border, which by the way was super easy. I mean there was a little bit of a wait, but getting through customs, I mean he asked us a couple questions, looked at our passports, asked how long we were gonna be there for, where were we staying, blah blah blah, and then let us through. And then all of a sudden we had no more internet and we had no idea how to get to our Airbnb because we were going to rely on Google Maps. So we called m multiple of our parents and asked them to Google map it and then like screenshot it and send it to us. So Sam has T-Mobile and he has international, free international texting and phone calls. But no, you do end up having internet. We didn't know that at the time, right? Is that right? Turns out he actually does have some free international data, but at the time, we didn't know that. T-Mobile just sent him a text that said, like, you have free texting and calls. So we called some of our parents, asked them to look it up and screenshot it, but then send it via text message, not via iMessage. Long story short, we eventually got screenshots of the directions and then felt like, you know, MapQuest days when you got printouts of your directions to get us to our Airbnb. And then, of course, there was a bunch of steps there, too. We had to pick up the keys from a 7-Eleven. Like, did you know that was a thing? They have these, like, lock boxes inside 7-Elevens. You go up to them and you, like, press a code and it, like, opens a little door and there's your keys. Like, it was kind of crazy. So, picked up the keys and then found the like the apartment building but then had to find the parking garage and it was just it was a, a lot of things but we finally made it to our airbnb we're relaxing a little bit we had leftover wine from dinner earlier this week so i'm having a glass of wine i'm gonna freshen up and get ready and then we're gonna go meet one of sam's childhood friends who lives here for dinner sam actually hasn't seen him in quite a few years and so i know he's really excited to spend some time with him i think we're going to get asian food i guess that's good good here i don't know they they made the dinner plans i'm just showing up so let me quickly show you our airbnb we are like in i think the heart of downtown vancouver i looked at a lot of places one of the big things was i wanted to make sure it had a parking spot for a rent car i didn't want to be trying to find parking or like deal with street parking so like i had that toggle on and then there were a lot of options like outside the city but it I don't know, it just made sense. It felt right to pay a little bit more to actually stay in the city and be able to walk to things or just, I don't know, to be in the city. To just be, that's, that's what I wanted. So let me show you, let me flip, flip you around here. This is the view with, there's like a little patio. There's like a little porch patio. This is the view from the porch. We're on the fifth floor. So there's a little piece of the patio over here that the, that window over there is the bedroom, but there's not any like tables or chairs. And then there's a little seat here. And the weather here is absolutely gorgeous. So then come in here. This is like the living room area. So we've got a little table and chairs to eat there. TV, coffee table, couch, Sam not included. Some art on the walls. And look at this uh, really super cool chandelier. I have, we actually haven't turned it on yet, but I'm kind of obsessed with it. And then there's another couch, and then it's got a little kitchen. There's really not much in it. There, It looks like there is stuff to make coffee, like actual coffee. But truthfully, there's like a bunch of coffee places around here. That's probably where I'll go get coffee. And then it's just, you know, typical little one-bedroom apartment, bathroom, typical. At least now we have a bathtub. We don't have a bathtub at our hotel in Seattle. And then it's a one-bed. It's a queen-size bed. So good size bed, we've been in a king all week and it's been kind of weird because you know, when you sleep in a queen and then you get into a bigger bed, it's just, uh, it's a different experience. And then a mirror and then the closet. So that's it. That is a quick little tour of our Airbnb. And now I'm gonna go get ready for dinner.
of great Asian food and Asian culture in Vancouver. That was something I had no idea of going into this trip. So we had some great food and then we drove back to Seattle and now we're headed back to the airport to return the red car and get home. We are taking the red eye back, but I mentioned this I think in another video where most of the time when I take the red eye, I am going straight to work the next day. So it's kind of nice to be taking the red eye, but then going home afterwards and having a whole day to sort of regroup and like get my life together before the work week starts. So, um, I mean, red eyes are no fun. It's not like a good night's sleep, but I'm kind of looking forward to having a whole day to recover. It was an amazing, amazing trip. I, it's been a long time, I feel like, since I went on a vacation where I just kind of explored the city and did whatever I wanted. So that was really exciting, I feel like, in Seattle and in Vancouver being together and with his friend who lives there. It's one of his like elementary school friends that lives in Vancouver, so getting to hang out with him. And he like showed us around the city. I think without him, we wouldn't have seen like half the stuff that we saw, which was really awesome. I mean, we would have gone to like the major sites because I could Google, but it wouldn't have been the same from somebody who lives there. So that was really great as well. Um, what was your favorite part of the trip? Trip. The whole trip. The last seven days. It was spending time with my family. <laughs> oh, he just went extra points for that. It's probably also seeing your friend. It was definitely yeah. seeing your friend. Oh, the camera just moved. It was definitely seeing your friend. Yeah. I'm torn between the suspension bridge thing in Vancouver. That was awesome. Like, it was just really cool being out there in nature and spending time together, but it was just like a really cool experience and I feel like I've never done anything like that before. Um, or like, I mean, I feel like I've been in the rainforest, like in Costa Rica, but I've never, I don't know, it was really cool. And then I also really loved the seafood place we went to in Seattle called Etta's that your friend recommended that was delicious. I mean, it was unreal. And then we took the waitress's recommendations for what to order and it was just perfect. Um, those are probably my two highlights, but it has been a wonderful trip. We are excited to get home and get back to a regular schedule. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out this weekly vlog, mostly a vacation vlog. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. Are you filming? Yeah. But I can sing it. You can sing well. Obviously, wear the session. He actually. I was very clearly the least in in fit. Has that been focus out of focus this whole time?